Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Alison McConnell and Tam McManus here with me on this Monday. There's lots to talk about. Uh, the UK and the Republic of Ireland have bid for Euro 2028 and ditched their thoughts about hosting the World Cup in 2030. Uh, obviously, all the nations feel as if there's a better chance of hosting the Euros. So uh, that bit is in. We'll get the thoughts of everyone on the programme about that. Uh, Rangers respond to Celtic's win at Motherwell with a 5-0 thrashing of Hearts. Stephen Glass under a bit of pressure at Aberdeen now. And what about James McPake? Is he equally under pressure as Dundee are still at the bottom of the table? Sean Maloney struggling, taking a wee while to get the players to respond to his way of thinking. And uh, at this point, before we get into the meat and bones of Saturday and Sunday, our thoughts and prayers and condolences go to the family of Dave Katanak, who has sadly passed away. Celtic Football Club have announced that he played uh, in the mid-60s for Celtic and also played for Stirling Albion and Falkirk. So our thoughts and prayers with his family at this very sad time. He was 75 years of age. OK, um, we love our football. We'd love you to give us your opinion. And as ever, try and keep it sensible on our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Give us the notifications. Um, and also, over and above that, download the app and you'll get all the latest breaking stories. There you are. I've given you my pitch. Now let's get into the meat and bones of the football at the weekend. Uh, Rangers were under a bit of pressure to respond and battle back. They did that roughly against Hearts and then some. Yeah, well, I never saw the 90 minutes. So I saw always the highlights and I didn't know the score before. I watched the highlights. Oh, so just so you wanted the excitement? I said, yeah, so I thought when it started, <laughs> when it was one nothing, and it started the second half and Hearts were doing particularly well. Yeah. I couldn't see 5 nothing. Yeah, because it won nothing, you know, they were giving as much as they were getting. But after the, the second goal went in, it was just, uh, you could see no no suitor, no how it. You know, the centre of the defence was just a shambles at the end. Yeah. You know, but yeah, Rangers were absolutely flying, you know, and all the big stars turned it up on the day. And when you get Ibrox with 50,000 behind you, you're two and three, nothing up, it could be anything. Well, I thought the Morelos goal was an absolute peach for the outside with the uh, curl with the left boot. Uh, even Kamara's goal, uh, again, a bit of coolness personified before dispatching the ball into the back of the net. If anything, that urgency, that quick, sharp passing was what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst wanted on the Wednesday. Yeah, I think Rangers answered <coughs> a lot of questions. I think the supporters were looking for a big performance after the midweek. I think they had to start the game well. They did. They put Hearts under, under pressure right from the first whistle. You know, and they got the early goal, I think, which is key as well. As Ruffy said, the start of the second half, Hearts had a couple of opportunities. He boy Devlin has, misses a sitter, he's got to lob it over McGregor. But when the second goal went in, just see the confidence flowing back into Rangers. Every player wanted the ball, fans were behind him. And as Ruffy said, you know, being there myself, when you go two or three nothing down at Ibrox at Parkhead, when they're knocking the ball about, it's you just want to find a worse to go. And Hearts were poor. Hearts were very, very poor at the back. They, they missed the two centre backs. And I think Rangers answered it. They were under pressure. Celtic, great, great result, great performance. Rangers went better. That went were five nothing. So the title race is on now. It really is. Yeah, uh, you wonder where they're going to slip up. I mean, I, I always think uh, Ali after a, a Celtic Rangers game at any point in the season, um, the losing team comes under so much scrutiny, and then you get these wild rumours. You know, the players are not responding to the manager. Some guys want away. There's always this uh, heavy analysis. Some of it so erratic it defies belief. Giovanni van Bronckhorst is is just in the door. He's had a really good start, and and then suddenly there was just that little bit of. You know, fallout from a previous manager where you eventually get uh, a few dodgy results. But that, I thought, was an impressive performance. Yeah, and I think probably the performance was as important as the three points for Rangers. I think uh, it was about getting back onto a solid footing immediately. I think they were rattled by the performance of Celtic and the result on Wednesday night. And I think it's important then just to, to find your feet again and, and put in a, a solid performance because there becomes a danger then of slipping and, and an erosion of confidence if you don't do that. I think too, when you look at the, the overall picture since the games resumed from the the winter break, the, the swinging points, I think there is a danger that when you lose that momentum that there there starts to be a, a lack of belief going through the team. So I think it was it was vital to get the win and equally important was the manner of it. Yeah, well, John Adams has just uh, posted a message saying, do you think it'll go down to the last day, Ruffy? Is it one? Are we in for one of those seasons? 
I hope we are for us. You know, it's always exciting when that is the case. And the evidence of yesterday, you just find it hard to believe. Well, you do would believe that Rangers and Celtic might not lose at home till the end of the season. You know, they look that dominant. So you're then looking at away games, and we keep talking about Aberdeen, Hibs, and Hearts away from home are the three games that uh, you would expect them to have harder games and maybe drop points. So, and obviously you've got the two Old Firm games to come as well. Might be an advantage. The last ones at Parkhead because it will be so tight. Yeah. Uh, do you find yourself now that since you've been wearing the, the birthday hoodie that you, you like just fiddling about? <laughs> you like just fiddling about with the, with the strings no on it. One. <laughs> no. He's two no go hoodie. <laughs> no, they they are. Uh, <laughs> look at those two. <laughs> Honestly, you, you look at the age of them padding about in hoodies. Um, but uh, I mean, listen. The the thing about it is, uh, Tom. Players will come back. Ramsey got maybe 20 minutes um, as well. And Giovanni Van Bronckhorst will slowly but surely be hoping that he's able to play a consistent 11 that he thinks you know, will give them the chance to. Europe, I think, is just a slight distraction, which I don't think will be there too much longer. Um, and I don't think even the most ardent Rangers fan thinks they're going to see off Borussia Dortmund. But um, I think th- they really want this win in the title this season because of the the money that's on offer. Yeah, I think Rangers went all in. You know, in the January window there, bringing in Aaron Ramsey is a huge signing. He came off the bench. Steve Davis came off the bench. Ryan Jack came into the team. Lundstrom came into the team. So Rangers have got a big squad. Yeah. You know, a real big squad of players there. Morelos, I think, was the key. He's got a fantastic record against Hearts. You know, he scores against them every time, and he led the line brilliantly. Second goal, he got a wee bit of luck with the deflection, but took it brilliantly with his left foot. First goal, you know, he does well. Could have had a hat trick. So. You know, Rangers have got a, a really, really strong squad. Celtic have got a strong squad, so I don't think there's going to be many points dropped between now and the end of the season. Is that uh, because you're looking at the, the, the teams that he's that, mentioned yeah. and you thought, they're just not at it? No. Hearts are not at it. Uh, uh, you know, Hibs certainly not at it. Aberdeen are off it completely. Yeah, I think that a couple of weeks ago Aberdeen took points off the Rangers, but I think now, you know, you're looking at where, where Rangers and Celtic are going to drop their points. You know, they're not going to drop many at home, if any, for me. From now on, I just think it's so tight and both of them have got the bit between the teeth. So I think away from home maybe could come a cropper, but the two old firm games are going to be huge. Plus it could go down to goal difference, as it done to 2003. Yeah, it went down to goal difference, so it could go down to that again. You, you, you seriously think it's going to be like I that? think it could yeah. go all the way. You yeah. know, I, I genuinely think it's going to go to the last game of the season and Celtic getting the four goals. I think Celtic have got a, a superior goal difference, but I think Rangers and Celtic fans will now start to be looking at that goal difference and trying to get that closer. Yeah, okay. Um, interesting take on that. Um, so Rangers were under a bit of pressure because, quite simply, they knew whatever Celtic were doing earlier in the day on the Sunday, they had to match that. They did. They got the 5 0 win uh, and got the three points. So there's still only a point at the top of the table. The difference, and the reason for that is because earlier in the day, Alison, we were out there uh, working at for Park from Motherwell against Celtic and Celtic. Came out of the traps flying, took a wee bit of time to get a grip of the game, but boy, when they got a grip of it, they were blistering. Yeah, I think the performance was maybe reflective of just how dominant they had been on Wednesday night and and maybe just the injection of confidence that, that comes with going top of the league for the first time this season. I thought it was a very assured performance. It was a an emphatic win. I thought by the time they went into the interval, they were three goals to the good and it might have been five or six, I thought. Also, it was it was a complete performance. I think at times this season, you've seen Celtic fade after an hour or, or 70 minutes. I thought they played right across the, the 90 minutes. And I'd say the same about Wednesday night too. And again, as the season goes deeper, they get stronger when you look at the players who have been out and who are still to come back. Yeah, I mean, Ruffy... He, he's got options now. He can t- if he's if he's so far ahead in a game, he can suddenly make five substitutions and change the entire look of the side. Yeah, you saw that at the weekend. I think it was about thirty-five minutes ago, and he took two off. You know, that's not something you can afford to do when it's one nothing. But when you're so far ahead, you know you can do that. And then the quality's coming on the the park, and the quality same at Ibrox. There was quality coming on the park there now. So the two of them have invested well, and in, in the players they brought in, and, and all the players are contributing but as far as Celtic is concerned you get the ball wide and you're panicking because there was so much pace and so much they're so ahead of everybody you know the balls are flying into the box you know everybody's reading they seem to be doing something in training it's just telepathic now they know what's going to happen when somebody's wide they know the ball's coming in when it's coming in 
And they all seem to be reading off the same hymn sheet. Yeah, good players can play. Um, good If you've got good players in the park, they can execute the manager's wishes. If I, if I look at the Celtic side, the style has changed from Lennon and Brendan Rodgers. Um, you know, there was a more methodical build-up at times, and then you had that burst. If you had clever players in there in the Celtic side at the time with Brendan Rodgers, you had Sinclair, and at times you had Patrick Roberts. But this side seems more intent in getting forward quicker. You know, as Ruffy had mentioned, their interplay and their speed at moving, they're not interested in, in at times, apart from along the back line, they're not interested in, you know, dilly-dallying about and they want to get that ball forward. They want to release the, the wide players. Yeah, I think that Celtic are very direct. I think they'll, they'll they'll keep possession when they can, but they want to high press the opposition. They want to try and get win the ball high up the pitch and then go and create. They want to get the ball wide uh, to the wingers. I think Abada this season, twenty year old, I think he's got fourteen goals and eleven assists. Fantastic, you know, numbers for him. You know, I know he's come under a wee bit of scrutiny from some, some of the Celtic supporters at times for his his general play, but yeah. the numbers don't lie, and I think he's he's been fantastic. And you've got Forrest on the other side, Jota. So Celtic have got great wide players. And I think when you've got good wingers, good wide players, you're always going to create chances. Uh, Gio Kamakis could have had a couple of goals as well. He's one that Celtic supporters will be looking to try and just get a goal or two, just to ease the pressure on him. But Celtic look irresistible going forward. They're so exciting to watch. You know, the boy O'Reilly come on, was fantastic. One and a half million, you know. So, you know, you're looking at the signings that Postecoglou has made. <coughs> he's not made many mistakes, if any. You know, he's been fantastic in the transfer market. So... I think every, the whole thing is positive at Celtic at the minute. Yeah, and the one man that we didn't mention there was a the man who got two goals. The second one, without really any backlift, was Tom Rogic's second. was an absolute screamer. And Anthony Ralston at the end of the game uh, was full of praise for the Australians' performance. And Tom's on top form. He is unplayable. You just can all see that yourself. So, um, you know, it's, it's terrific to play him, especially down that side. You know, he makes my job easy as well. We're giving me the option when I'm on the ball. Coming on the inside, on the outside, so uh, and he was terrific again today. Yeah, I, I mean, Tam mentioned there are a number of players. If there's one player I would like to highlight to you, it's probably someone that has come in for a bit of criticism. People have questioned whether he's got a long-term future there. People have been critical of him in European games as well. But Greg Taylor just seems to have come in and he put a ball through for Hatati for the first goal, um, which just opened the play up down the left-hand side. If anything, this is a boy that I think maybe has, you know, suffered more than most, but he just he just keeps getting picked, he just keeps going about his job. Um, and, and maybe a, a lot of players and a lot of fans are not noticing the job he's doing. Does he does he deserve credit? I think he does deserve credit. I think at the if you go back to the start of the season, I think Celtic fans were very keen to bring in both a left and a right back. I think it's the left back position has been a, a perennial complaint, I think, over recent seasons. I think it must be difficult when you're aware of that conversation taking place round about you and and I think players are very aware of it. So I think it it's a mark of his character, like Anthony Ralston too, that you block it out, you speak to the manager, you find out what it is you've got to work on, you apply yourself, you go in with a very positive attitude and you do what's asked of you. I think there could be few complaints just now. I think he's he's played well. I thought he played all right on Wednesday night too. I think there are still frailties in his game defensively at times, but I think he's uh, he's adapted to that inverted fullback if you if you want to call it that. I think you know you're at risk sometimes your eyes glazing over when you start to bring in yeah. these terms. But when you see it in in action on the pitch, then it, it lends itself to a fairly exciting and attacking method of football that they've bought into. Yeah, it's, it's interesting actually, <laughs> listening to some of my fellow Scottish football writers, players who are journalists at the side of the park talking to Anthony Ralston about the inverted fullback role, <laughs> as if they're talking about it with assuredness and, and confidence in what it's all about. I know at the start of the season, Tam, some people were going, why is the right back moving in field? Yeah. It's an absolute nightmare but they're not talking about that now, are they? No, they're not, and uh, it's all about results. And uh, Alison mentioned a key thing there, you know, buying into it. You know, if, if a new manager comes in and you get off to a good start, and I've been at several clubs, you get off to a good start, you, the manager, you buy into what he's doing, could you trust him? You know you're getting results from it. If you don't, then it can be a short term, uh, you know, for the manager. You could be out the door, but I think they've improved so much over the course of the last three or four months. I think they've got stronger in the squad, but... I think Celtic are they're so exciting to watch you know, with the full-backs and the wide areas and as I said, they look as if they can score three, four, five every game then that must be great. 
Yep. Um, okay. Uh, as far as Celtic's European squad has uh, been released, no sorrow in Edaguchi. Edaguchi's picked up an injury. Uh, I think maybe it was an easier decision for Ange to leave him out. But uh, the rest of it is all fairly bog standard um, for um, Ange Postecoglou, Ruffy, uh, even Christopher Julian in there to bolster the squad for the, the games ahead against Bodo Glimp. Yeah, the goalkeeper. What's goalkeeper? They just Joe Hart, Scott Bain, and Barkas. So, so he never got his move then? He never got his move. No, he's still there at the moment. But uh, um, I mean, he's almost a forgotten man. I'm, I'm amazed that you've mentioned him there. But the rest of that squad, he's got Kyogo in there too. Um, and David Turnbull, which suggests they're not too far away right. from fitness. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we spoke about both teams, the, the pool of players they've got. And it's so strong. And much, much stronger than every other team in the league. And that's why they're head and shoulders above everybody because they, they can't compete. And I think the Motherwell manager the other day there was, was openly admitting we, we can't compete with the players that they brought in. Yeah, um, Graham Alexander, I, I don't think he was too uh, critical of his players. They realised they were up against a, a quality side. First and foremost, they're, they're a, a quality team that, that work their socks off and have a, a great humility about themselves, about how, how they go about it. So it's not about just what they do on the ball. It's, it's how hard they make it for you when you've got the ball. And, um, you know, we, listen, we're trying to aspire to be a, a better team and, and we sort of try to approach, you know, have out of possession stuff in the same way. But um, and uh, I'd rather my team go like that than, than sit back and, and just, just um, wait to get beat. Um, yeah, that was Graham Alexander. I don't think Mother will really uh, at the races once Celtic got a real grip of the game. Uh, apologies if you just witnessed a couple of bank robbers in the background there. Some, <laughs> some, 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 some people just don't care what they look like at a game. Just stay warm. That's the key Is to that it. Alistair in the no. <laughs> no, no, Alison was, uh, Alison was out of shot, but well wrapped up in warm. Alison, send the minions down to do that. Oh, She's too busy. Oh, yeah. Covering about eight newspapers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, 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 and making sure she's invoiced them. <laughs> um, OK, uh, let's not start laughing too heavily in the, the studio because for every high, uh, there has to be a low. And we're only moments away, Ruffy, from talking to Andrew Shiny. <laughs> so, oh, no. so it's, it's not looking good. It's, I, I'm on, honestly. I mean, I don't know. Since we brought Andrew on, he's been a great lad. I've known him for so many years. This has been this is just the worst season to chat to him. Yeah, he's just going further down and down in the dumps. Yeah, and every time you speak to him, you know, you can you can feel he's hanging on to that result, and it's just not happening. Yeah, and uh, obviously, big game coming up at the midweek. Two so. big games coming oh. up. Oh wow! So. Well, I have to say to you, by the way, uh, Tom, that if this continues the way it's going at the moment, I think one day we'll just go to Andrew in his room and all the frames will be smashed. <laughs> just, li <laughs> just lying going there. To yeah, the the wreck it, yeah, right, he's going to wreck it. <laughs> the Aberdeen strips are going to be thrown on the fire. It's just going to be a nightmare. So let's cut to the chase. Livingston 2, Aberdeen 1. Um, too little, too late. A response, I would suggest to you, Andrew Shiny, when Ramirez has got to go back, albeit the Dons had a, a shot cleared off the line. What's happening at, at Aberdeen? Um, th they are struggling big style. There's no getting away from it. Uh, the away form is diabolical. And if you go to Livingston and you don't turn up for the first 70 minutes and you concede two goals as easily as Aberdeen did, there's only one result, and that's a home win. Yes, you can see a fine goal by Ramirez and lots of pressure in the last 20 minutes, but it was the pressure of headless chickens. Um, there was no pattern to the play. And as, as Ruffy says, you know, <laughs> it just goes from bad to worse. And you think when it has hit rock bottom, all of a sudden another hole appears that they fall down. So um, it's not been a good season. Yeah, There's an understatement for you. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I, listen, the great thing about it is uh, we have a bit of a banter beforehand, but uh, you call it as you see it because you're watching it week in and week out. Is the manager under pressure? Of course he is. Um, look at the results that they're getting. Look at their waveform. Two wins in 13 games. When was the last Aberdeen manager to have a record like that? Mark McGee, Ebby Scottdale, 
something like that. Um, it's just not acceptable. There was great optimism at the start of the season and it has just dissipated week on week. Yet, you yes, look at the league table and if you're a glass half full kind of person, which I have been most of the season, you're looking and saying, well, we're only four points away from the side that is in fourth place in the table. But then you look over your shoulder and you see, we're only three points ahead of the side that is in 10th place in the table. And which way are we going? It's going towards 10th rather than 4th. And that is a worry. So yes, Stephen Glass is under immense pressure, but his players have got to step up to the plate. And that's what has been obviously lacking in the last few games. Nobody has wanted to stand up and be counted. Yeah, um, Stephen Glass himself not shirking uh, the question after the game. I'm under pressure every day of my life at this club, so it's nothing. It's nothing new. Uh, you you want your team to produce results and performances that that don't encourage reactions like that. I think when you've got a performance like that, you're open to whatever's coming your way. Well, I, I, I've got to ask. I'll ask you the question, Ruffy, First of all, and then I'm going to go back to Andrew <coughs> and get his thoughts on it. Two huge games, as as Tam mentioned there. I mean, Aberdeen need Celtic like a hole in the head in midweek. Um, it, it, is it a situation where you can see Dave Cormack and Stephen Glass is a Dave Cormack uh, appointment? Can you see him looking at that and thinking two games, another two defeats, pulling the plug on him? No, I can't. You know, I think uh, he's brought his man in. You know, I think he has to stand by him. I know. If they get knocked out of the cup, that be the two cups out the road. You know, the home fans will be the ones that will put extreme pressure on the owner and the, the manager and the and the players and everything. So no, I, th- I think you've got to give him a season, uh, but he'll know uh, that uh, after that season, and if he has been let off, then the next year has to improve, and it just means next year. He's not going to get the same time as what he's got this year. Well, uh, that's an interesting take, uh, Ruffy. I wonder, Andrew, do you share that view, or do you think uh, the fan pressure will force his hand? I think Dave Cormack has got too big an ego to be swayed by the fans, to be perfectly honest. As Alan said, you know, Stephen Glass is uh, Dave Cormack's appointment, and he won't want to admit that he made the wrong appointment. I think Wednesday is a free hit for Aberdeen. Nobody expects them to win. Everybody's just looking at what the margin of victory for Celtic is going to be. Um, If they roll up their sleeves, get wired right in, who knows, they might manage to get a draw. But then the finger is pointed at them again, and rightly so, they only raise their game in the big games. If they get battered, well, that's what everybody expects. But Saturday at Fir Park... The season is on the line. Simple as that. Lose that, go out the Scottish Cup, that's the season finished. And you hope against hope that they don't get sucked into a relegation battle because I wouldn't fancy Aberdeen in that. Not the way that they've been playing in recent weeks. And you'd be up against clubs that are used to relegation battles. So uh, I think Wednesday night will take care of itself, as I say, I think Celtic will win. It's just a matter of how many they win by. But Saturday is where everything comes home to roost. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, Andrew. I think you've always been uh, very honest with us in your assessment of Aberdeen and not pulling any punches on it. I have been um, consistent in where I think the problem lies, uh, Tam, and it's quite simply they haven't addressed the back four. The back four does not have... I mean, Bates has come in... But other than that, they're not doing their job. I don't think they've got a solid central defensive partnership. I think the goal that uh, Livingston scored, again, just cut right through the middle of that defence. That's where the problems lie. Yeah, I think defensively they're poor. They have been all season. I think they've they've not kept a clean sheet in the league for, I think, six or seven games as well. So, listen, I think Stephen is under a bit of pressure now. I think I always, when a new manager comes in, I always tend to give him two windows. You know, Stephen's had the summer window, he's had the January window. I think now supporters will be looking at it and going, right, we want to see improvement. And uh, Stephen's well aware of that. So I think he's now got a big week ahead, two big games coming up. I think the cup game's huge. I think Aberdeen, you know, that's their season in a nutshell, that game at Motherwell. You know, if they lose that game, go out both cups, then I think the, the, the fans will really turn on the manager. So I think he's Celtic, as you said, <laughs> need that game like a hole in the head. That's going to be a real tough one. 
Uh, but I think the bigger game is the cup. I think they've got to stay in the cup. Yeah, I think Andrew makes a great point, though. You're looking here saying to yourself, some people might be looking and saying, oh, look, you know, we're still, we're still looking at fourth. But I look at the way they're performing, and as Andrew mentioned there, you're actually thinking that they're heading down the way. Yeah. And I, I, it doesn't matter if it's Motherwell. The I don't see Aberdeen getting to a final, do you? No, I would agree with you. I think that's um, slipped now into the bottom six, which I think becomes quite a precarious place to be. And I think uh, essentially what happens is it's supporters who make these decisions about the future of a manager. I think when supporters turn and I think once they make their feelings clear, I think it becomes very, very difficult to override that. I think if, if you lose the trust of the support, invariably what you find is that a decision is made. Yeah, um, I don't think it's too far away. Andrew, it's tough times up there for you. Um, obviously, you'll be uh, watching the game on Wednesday, but do you think they can get past Motherwell on the, uh, on the weekend cup match? We haven't played well against Motherwell in the two league games. So it's going to be hugely difficult to win that cup tie. But I've been around long enough to see Motherwell win 3-0 against Aberdeen at Fir Park on a Wednesday night. And then Aberdeen go down on the Sunday and turn them over. So you, you always live in hope, but uh, it, it's going to be extremely difficult. And to me, it will be a turn up for the books if Aberdeen win. Yeah, last week, Andrew, on the, the, the show, one uh, of the uh, uh, viewers says that every time we chat about anything in life, we, we talk about having nights out and then all of a sudden we talk about uh, having a bevy and a party. Uh, would you like Tam and, and Ruffy and Alison and myself just to come up there and take you out in a night out in Aberdeen just to lift your, sp <laughs> just to lift your, just to lift your spirits? We're worried about you. <laughs> The if, if you can find a happy place in Aberdeen, <laughs> you'll be doing damned well at the moment. <laughs> oh, okay. um, I've been through the mill. It washes over the top. Uh, listen, Andrew, it's always good because uh, you're there to do a professional job and you do it great uh, for us, I, I can tell you that. But uh, nevertheless, absolutely top draw to speak to Andrew Shiny. There are difficult times for Aberdeen, but I don't want it all to be about Aberdeen. Uh, you know, we get Andrew's take on it and we'll speak to Andrew uh, again on uh, Monday of next week when the two games will be over and we'll get a real insight into them. But let's not take anything away from Livingston. Livingston are, you know, They've defied all of us. I thought they were going to be relegated. They are not going to be relegated. They are a team playing good football and they know how to win games. Yeah, he certainly is getting something out of the players. And a lot of people are saying it's because of what's happening behind the scenes, you know, in the dressing room or everybody getting on well with each other. And there was a particular game at Dundee United. There was about 10 minutes to go or something. And everybody was throwing their body on the line. There were shots coming in. They were blocking it and... Goalkeepers making super saves, so I think he's got a, a right team effort there, you know, and and he has got players that will match most of the other the other teams in the league, but obviously apart from Rangers and Celtic. So no, I don't see them in being in any trouble either. Yeah, and of course the manager was quick to point out this was a Livingston team that had to defend with ten men at the end of this game. They're all in the changing room now. They're all enjoying themselves. The music's up full blasting. Do you know what? I think they thoroughly deserved it, if I'm honest. We defended, we're fine at the defensive third extremely well when we went down to 10 minutes. Backs against the wall. I thought Max Strijic was incredible at points today. Made up for his probably his error in the last game at Aberdeen at home. Where he cost his points today, definitely up and made out for, up for that. Well, as a manager, you've got to give him great credit. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, all the backstories on David Martindale have been done. This is about him guiding a side and keeping them in the top flight. Um, all the stories about how we hate the pitch and some of the accusations of the Long Paul team, all of that has been quickly quashed and you see them performing, you see them scoring goals and you see people talking about the players that are playing for them. I think they've been brilliant this season. I think at home, particularly, they've beat Celtic this season at home. You know, They've beat Aberdeen at home, they've beat Hibs at home. You know, they beat Hibs at East Road a couple of weeks ago. I was really impressed with them. I think they are, they, they could finish fourth this season, Livingston. Without doubt for me, it's, it's very tight between fourth and tenth. You know, any, any, any team that goes on a run can finish fourth this season. And I wouldn't rule Livingston out. I think they'll pick a lot of points up at home. They're hard to beat. They've got a wee bit of quality as well. The three boys in the midfield, Pittman, Holt and Omeonga, must be a nightmare to play against. You know, they're right after the opposition. They can play. 
I really think I think they'll finish in the top six, Livingston. Yeah. I think they'll finish in the top six. Uh, Ali, and, and far be it from me to come across as a pompous purist, but next season, but I might as well, <laughs> next season we could have our broth and Livingston in the same division. Indeed, I, I thought that was a huge result on, on Friday night. Uh, I had watched Kilmarnock last weekend and thought that they would go to our broth and win. I thought they would accelerate at the top of the championship. I thought they would have it in their sights and would kick on. I was I was stunned when that result came through on Friday night, but I think you have to take their challenge very, very seriously now. Um, so if you fancy a, a long trek up to our broth of a, of a <laughs> Saturday afternoon in November. Ro a bro strip on already. Isn't yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just actually going to say to you, Ruffy, suddenly you're playing in an artificial uh, pitch and then in the top flight you're, play, you're playing in what can only be described as a tornado every yeah. second week up in a bro. Yeah, but I, I think our manager's come out and said you, you've got to give them a bit of respect. It's not all about the wind. I mean, you, you've got to deal with it as well. Obviously, they play up there all the time and they may use it to their advantage, but they're good, good players. Uh, and unfortunately, the boy McKenna get injured at the weekend. I think his hamstring, I don't know how bad it is, you know, but he's a big, big player for them. But certainly, that's Kamarnock's Dam's team, you know, and uh, they just kind of score goals in big games. You know, they lost the boy Henry, you know, he's a way back. So, you know, that's a problem. I think Kamarnock are still favourites, you know, to with the, the players that he's brought in. You know, you'll remind me, Tam, Tate, Kale you know, yeah. I mean, it's some of the players have brought in, they're really throwing everything at it, same as Dundee did, Dundee United did there the other day, other year. So they'll still be there or thereabouts, but, uh, you know, all credit to, to Dick uh, Arbroath. I, I think they're a good football inside and very, very did you, hard to beat. Did you hear Dick after the game saying that's us, you know, for the playoffs now, top four? Yeah. You're still playing it down, but I think I looked at our bros next three games. They play Hamilton, uh, Queen of the South, and Morton. See the bottom yeah. six. That like they could be, I, they could be seven or eight points clear by ten days' time. If, if you, you if you look at it, but the, the teams at the bottom have now got their act together. The, the, they've all, the, they've, they've, all, got, they've yeah. all got new managers. They've all got new players come in. I think it, I think it was you, McCall, that said that I think the, the the four or five teams at the bottom of the league will determine who's at the top. Yeah, because they lost that taking points off each other. It is cutthroat now, isn't oh. it, Ruffy? You know, is, are you yeah. boys going to make it? Yeah, I would like to think we'll be in the top four. At yeah. least we've got I think, three or four games ahead of Wraith Rovers and three against Inverness. So are, you going to play an, are you going to play another home game this season at Fur Hill? Is that <laughs> yeah. pitch going to be playable? Is well, it still underwater? Uh, <laughs> Queen's Park are just ripping it up. I don't know what kind of football they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, Ruffy, sure. Um, Dundee, Ross County. I mean, I, listen, we won't even have Charlie in on Wednesday. He's avoiding everything, luckily, uh, at the moment. But, Alison, you've got to hand it to Malky. His team, and I mentioned it to you, and I, I, I mentioned to you the, the first quarter of the season. I'd been to see them three or four times, and I thought, they play good football. I knew that the, the, they were a side that were not going to be uh, at that bottom end because they... they they had too many players that looked as if they could do some damage. And, and Hungbo and Ch Reagan Charles Cook are just you know, scoring goals for fun. Yeah, the, Reagan Charles Cook's return has been extraordinary when you consider where he's playing and the, and the environment he's in. But it's a huge win. I don't think you could downplay the significance of that result at the weekend. And I think from the turn of the year, they've really accelerated. They, they look like a team who are on the up, who are moving away from it. Uh, I, I did wonder about the game. I think sometimes when you have a, a big game and a big result, as he did last weekend against Rangers, sometimes then you have a, a dip in adrenaline that sometimes you then go in and, and drop points in subsequent games. But I thought they were up for it. I thought they, they maintained a, a fairly high standard. I'd seen them a few weeks ago at Tannadice when they lost the game. I very like I think it was a, a 91st or 92nd minute denied them a point. But I thought they'd played particularly well in that game too. So... I think they've really, they, they look like a team who have a bit of belief about them that they don't belong at the bottom end. Yeah, um, your old boy scored the goal for Dundee, um, got them a, a good start. But then it was all about it was all about Ross County. It's calamity, you know. A lot of the goals that uh, they lose are are not like fantastic goals. You know, a lot of them are, but I would say the majority of them are all mistakes. You you could analyse them after it and. 
and like the two guys banging into each other. I don't know many times that's happened that this year. The goalkeeper's been making mistakes. The fullbacks have been losing control of the ball, and and, and ends up in a goal. And you could tell by James's interviews after the game, he's running out of excuses, really running out. You know, I uh, 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 saying the right things that people want to hear, and and that's going to happen every time you get a defeat. You know, because he knows now there's a gap there. There's a gap that. It's a three, it's a three winning gap. Well, you know? I think I think Dundee are now looking and seeing themselves. Okay, the battle's now just to see who's in the playoff. It's a straight straight shootout now for mm-hmm. me, hundred percent. Dundee, St Johnston, that get relegated. I, I don't think Ross, uh, Ross County, St Mirren, Livingston, they, they'll not be anywhere near them. I think it's between Dundee and St Johnston now. I think every Dundee supporter would bite your hand off right now to finish in the playoff, um, because they don't they look as if they're going to get relegated. Dundee, the way they're playing, they're losing games. You know, go in front, then get beat. That's a sign of a team that's going to get relegated. So I think it's a straight shootout now between Dundee and St Johnston. And does a change of manager alter that, even though they're only a point behind St Johnston? Is that is that the dilemma that the board have shortly, or do they just say, no, James goes all the way to the end of the season, we, we'll ever die by it? I think it becomes, I think the, the more fraught the position comes, the more realistic a proposition that is about changing a manager. I think you get desperate to stay in the league and if you look for that quick bounce then I think it does come into play at some point. Yeah, um, it's going to be a big call and of course once you get more and more irate fans uh, then it becomes more and more difficult. Um, Okay, I did ask you on our uh, quick chat on Facebook uh, ahead of this programme what's what's happening with the IBs. Um, Okay, you created chances (laughs) but I, I was listening to the boos, you know, at the end of the game on this one, not happy. And the defending for the goal, Tom, I mean, it was a gift. It was a total gift. I mean, first half was pretty poor for both sides, to be honest. I thought St Man probably just shaded it, shaded it, but Hibs didn't play particularly well. But from from half-time onwards, Ewan Henderson came on at half-time. Uh, boy from Celtic was superb. Should have scored twice. Two good saves with a goalkeeper on Nisbet, should have scored. Yeah. Should he have hit the volley? Probably aye. Yeah. Um, you know, Hibs had two or three chances to get that goal and they would have only won the game. They didn't, and then Jake Doyle Hayes unfortunately picked the wrong day. Uh, Stephen Kenny was over to watch him and the boy Ronan. He got an assist for Ronan by getting dispossessed at the edge of the box, and Ronan was ruthless. That was a clinical finish, bang, top corner, and that was the difference between the two teams. That clinical edge at the, the final third. So man got the road with, down the road with, with three points. Hibs could have still been playing. You know, after St Man scored, Hibs didn't look like scoring, and that was a wee bit worrying, to be honest. Are you the man to ask, and it's a difficult one, because obviously Ruffy and I are well aware you've still to go in and get your knuckles wrapped with uh, the manager shortly. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you the man to ask, are they playing... Uh, if you can't answer this, you know, I will, well, I'll go to the troops. Uh, are they playing better football and not getting the luck than what the Hibs fans were watching under Jack Ross. Is it a better plan? Can you see a vision? I can see a plan. I can see a vision. Yep, I can. I, I didn't see it in the first half. But from half-time onwards, for 20 minute spell, Hibs were excellent. You know, they, they created three or four great chances. They should have scored. And you could see the way Hibs wanted to play. Um, they were solid at the back. St Man never had that many chances. But they, they gifted a goal. And they, and they didn't look like scoring. So, again, you speak about Aberdeen having a big week. Hibs have got a big week. Rangers away, which is after yesterday, is going to be a tough proposition. Then a broth away on Sunday in the Scottish Cup. So they're two big games for Sean. Um, I don't think he's under any pressure for me yet. I always judge, as I said earlier, a manager on two windows. He needs two windows. Uh, I think the time to judge Sean Maloney will be after the summer next year, going into the start of next season. But the final third is the issue. The Hibs don't look like scoring a goal, and that's got to be something at the forefront of Sean's mind to try and find a, a solution to that. Uh, you know, does he play one up front, does he play two? But, you know, he's got to find something in that final third or else Hibs are going to be struggling. I think it's one of those moments, Ali, where uh, some Hibs fans will be thinking, mm, we should have we should have actually taken the money and get rid of this, but at the time when he was hot and people mm-hmm. were sniffing and there was, you know, there was interest, they should have thought, take the money because it's one of those ones where I'm looking at him right now and I, I, some of his shots lacking confidence, belief that he can score. He's a shadow of, a, of the player that Tam thought he was. He's certainly not a shadow of the player that I thought he was because I just, I just don't think he's absolutely top drawer. I think it's a good point. I think he looks like a player who's bereft of confidence just now and I think it's particularly noticeable in strikers 
when they when they are on a poor run, and I think he's had a very difficult season. In terms of Hibbs' overall issues in the final third, I think you have to remember the loss of Martin Boyle. I think uh, when he went to at the, the very latter stages of the window makes it very difficult to source a replacement and organise that quickly. So I do think when you take a player of that quality out, that it's inevitable that you miss him. And, and I only saw the highlights of the game, but I did think in that period that you were talking about that a player of Boyle's quality would have taken mm. one of those chances and maybe just flipped the game around. Yeah, are we being maybe at the point where we've got to say, this, listen, Sean Malone's just in the door. He's, he's, he's got nine players in there. Give him time. Yeah, I think he will get time. You know, I think he's been in long enough. All right, you look at results. You will again look at the Hibs supporters' reaction, you know, but as you say, he's got two games coming up. He could turn that quite easily. Uh, I don't. I, I still think they'll be in the top six. I think they've still got quality players in there, but uh, the, the players like Nisbet need to start scoring goals. You know, they need to get the confidence back uh, and start winning games, but they can turn. They can turn so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we work for St Mirren, Ali. Again, I mean, he mentioned the goal. Well, I may as well ask you, because since you were at the game, yeah. um, St Mirren, impressed with what Jim Goodwin's doing? Yeah, I thought they were good. Uh, Jordan Jones was excellent. I thought he was great for an hour. Yeah. Um, Connor Ronan was excellent. Took his goal superbly. I mean, there was a guy squaring him. I don't know if you've seen the highlights. I thought I was expecting yeah. him just to roll it to the boy. If he never scored, that boy would have given him pelters. But he so much confidence. Bang, you know. Yeah, keep up, Oh, he just nearly burst the net. Brilliant finish. Clinical. St Mirren were solid at the back. You know, they've got a bit, you know, they've got a bit of digging in the middle of the pitch and they've got pace in the wide areas. The young lad up front, Grieve, led the line pretty well as well. Um, so I thought St Mirren were, they played really well. They rode their luck at times, um, but I thought they I thought they performed really well. Yeah, St Johnson got themselves a point against Dundee United Alley. Suddenly, uh, clean sheets are back on the agenda. I think they'll need that. I think they'll need to grasp any positives that they can. I think they don't look like a team who are going to score an awful lot of goals. So I think at least if you can keep it tight at the back and you're not conceding cheap goals and silly goals that I think they were at times and at least you give yourself a fighting chance but I think it really now comes down to whether or not they can just <laughs> find a, a bit of momentum to engineer their, their way out but when you look at where they were six months ago you're, you're talking about maybe Cashner and Kevin is but I think Callum Davidson might be sitting and thinking you know there might have been a ripe time to go yeah. Someone else in the summer, given uh, how hot his ticket was in the back of the both cup wins. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there's no point in asking Ruffy about it. He was red hot in the 70s in Liverpool, Man City, could have been at Middlesbrough, could have been all those uh, big clubs in the first division, and he wouldn't have been sitting here with us. <laughs> nope, it's as simple as that. If, if we, Bertie, had given him the move that he deserved from his uh, tremendous play. Um, United, Dundee United have just released their financial figures, no surprise, it's on a similar vein to most clubs with uh, COVID taking uh, full effect, two and a half million losses um, last year, um, which is uh, difficult, what are you laughing at? I don't get that, they got a million and a half, hand it, yeah. the government. Yeah, but I think Dundee United are playing quite a hefty wage that a lot of people yeah. are asking about some of their individual Do players. Do they sell Shankland as well? Yeah. yeah, but they're still they're still paying you know some yeah, good yeah. wages for players, Ruffy. I mean, yeah, I'm not, Mark, I'm not Mark, Mark, well, I'm Mark Ogren, the United owner, has said he, he thinks they'll be in a good position. They might have players that I think they'll be looking to sell again. There's no doubt about that. But um, Tam Courts is doing a good job. They're not thinking about any kind of a relegation. No, no, What's I, the bit that you're? No, I'm just saying that if, if they're pleading poverty, you know, that they've got a million and a half more than most of the other Scottish teams got when they hand out, yeah. you know, uh, and, and uh, most of them have, have handled their finances properly. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think he's pleading poverty, he's just saying, despite the losses... Is an excuse? No, no, he's just, no, no, <laughs> listen to the facts, I, he's saying, despite the losses, they're, getting back they're, in, they're in a good place, they're in a good place, he's predicting they're going to have a good, they'll have a good season next, uh, over the next year. You know the financial results will turn around. Um, I don't think he's. I don't think he's bleating on about all oh, woe is me, Ruffy. It's just a a, a kind of a overview of the accounts. The accounts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You got it in for no, Dundee. Point, no, have you moved I'm away from Ross County? It'd be worse if they hadn't get the one and a half million, would it not? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the four million loss, wasn't it? <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. United in a WhatsApp group. Yeah, I was just about to say. Um, anyway, here's the table with Dundee United in it. I wonder what Ruffy will make of it. Uh, there's Celtic and Rangers still separated by a point, and as you can see, that that huge gap opening up, and I don't think anybody is going to lay a finger on them. Who is going to dismantle Rangers and Celtic away from home? Who's capable of doing it? Will it be midweek at Pataudry? Give us your view on that. Motherwell, Hibs, Dundee, Aberdeen in seventh. And then the bottom end of it, I think there are two teams there just detached at the moment. If County were to put any further points on the board to the detriment of St. Johnson and Dundee, as Tam mentioned there, it could be all about those two teams at the bottom just battling it out to see who gets a playoff place. Um, but there's... Crazy, isn't it? Mother, uh, seven points between fourth and tenth. Yeah. Very, very tight. Couple of wins, and you could be right up that table. Yeah, very absolutely. Tight. It is tight. Um, midweek fixtures. I mean, if you're looking at the at the, the clubs and the players uh, that are under a bit of pressure, Ruffy, you've got Aberdeen against Celtic, which is Andrew Shiny mentioned there. It's not a case of. Ca- well, I think a lot of Rangers fans will be looking and saying, okay. Let's see what yeah. you're made of. Can you can you step up against Celtic here? You you know you you seem to get up for the big games against Rangers. Can you get up for the big game against Celtic and take something? Yeah, well that's been thrown at Aberdeen for years. You yeah. know that it well, seems to be the again. case. No, I think there is a case. I think when when Celtic go up there, Aberdeen will go about them. You know and make it very very difficult for them. I don't think Celtic got an easy ride. They'll have to produce the form that they have been producing in the last month or so. But uh, I still think Celtic will win the game. But uh, I don't think they'll get easy games, even at Easter Road and Tynecastle at the end, but they'll have to produce it. Yeah, Dundee United against Motherwell, Hearts against Dundee, Rangers, Hibs, Ross County, Livingston um, as well. St uh, Johnson v St Mern. And St Johnson versus St Mern, which I haven't got in that list there, Tom. Thanks for uh, bailing me out. <laughs> um, but Hearts against Dundee, you're starting to look and you're saying to yourself, and St Johnson's Mirren, now at the bottom end, those two will just be constantly listening to the tranny and thinking, what's happening elsewhere? Yeah, I think every point is precious now when you're in that position. I think Hearts will be keen to bounce back quickly too. I think that would have been a fairly sobering afternoon yesterday at Ibrox. I think they'll want to just come back and, and retaliate and just... Um, not let it slip. It's been a fairly strong campaign from them up until now. I think that will be a quite a bruising encounter for them to come out of. They'll just want to, to get back to winning ways from it. But I think if you're at the bottom now, you're scrapping for absolutely everything. Yeah. It's, do, uh, do we know if the Suter one was an injury? Why he wasn't playing? Yeah, he, was, he was injured at, yeah, uh, midweek. He, he was, was injured, sitting in front of me at Easter Road. He mentioned injured. it in the, in the press conference, Robbie. Yeah, um, picked up a knock. But... Um, you know, it's one of those ones. I wonder if he maybe even the picked up a knock was just his way of saying, "Listen, let's just good one to miss. Let's just take him out of the heat of That's it all." Sick, you know, because a good it, one to miss. It is one of those situations. Um, okay, let's have a look at uh, the predictor table because, as ever, this is where Ali on a Monday just absolutely loves it. You can't wipe <laughs> the smile off her face. Although, believe me, by the way, we're going to try. <laughs> it's a shocking weekend, you know. Oh, oh, by the way, you'd a the terrible pack is weekend. closing in, Ali. As yeah. the mark of champions when you don't play well and still stay on top. Alison on two two one. Uh, Ruffy on two one two. I, I'm I don't know. It's just collapsed at the moment. Two oh eight uh, for myself. Tam, you're seven further behind on two oh one. Hugh McDonald on two hundred. And Tam on 183, and he's he's actually <laughs> Tam doesn't really care. I think no. he's risk of being marooned at the bottom. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, I don't think he's overly worried no. about it. To be perfectly honest with you, and you know, Ruffy, we're going to get a we're going to get a good meal out of it. But I think it would be nice to win, uh, Ruffy. Of the last ten yeah. years we've been together, I've won nine, yeah. uh, and, and Tam's no, Tam's and won one. To, nothing to show for it, so. I have said that. I'm, so I stopped you getting uh, 10 in a row last year, Peter? You did actually, yeah. well. That's I, I am, the nature uh, of the beast, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, the, the one, one particular year that I was winning, about two months for the end, and some, for some unknown reason, <laughs> it, it got scrapped. <laughs> it was at the end of the season. <laughs> it just, no longer, we're not doing that. I don't know tainted, why. That a tainted one. title then? That one. I am going to produce a trophy for this year. Yeah, Thanks. are you? Oh, that would be good, Ruffy. Yeah, Thanks, Ruffy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, you said she's so cocky, isn't she? <laughs> oh, she's absolutely. Listen, oh, I'd love to reel her in now. Remember, by the way, <laughs> that there are weekends <laughs> when you can fire out 21 yes, points. Correct. I mean, I am 
I had 21 points. 20 behind you, and I was about 90 behind you at one point, so I'm closing in. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All things can change on this. Uh, listen, predicting games is tough enough at the best of times, uh, and you only have to look at what's happening elsewhere. Down south, God, the FA Cup has put a few oh, managers uh, in the doldrums. Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, the, the one I thought you were going to say was Kidderminster. Oh. You know, I was watching Davy Moyes all through that, and... It was just chance after chance, and how must they be feeling? Mm. What, 10 seconds for the end? 15 mm. seconds? Yeah. Oh, to lose a goal like that, I mean, somebody said it would been, I think one of the commentators said it would been the, the greatest result ever in the English FA Cup. Could you think of any bigger? How many tiers are there? Are they five tiers down? Uh, yeah. Kind of five yeah. Tiers yeah. Tiers one of the biggest, I'd have seen. Yeah, it certainly would have been, uh, you know, as far as the gap between one club in one division and the other. Um, but there's, there's well, West Ham are fifth in the Premier League. Yeah, and Kidderminster, I think, in the conference mm. somewhere. So cup shocks are always good, though. You know, you always look back, and it's one of those days where the big team needs to have an off day at times, or you know, the the wee team that's in there has just got the up and at them, the crowds behind them. A bit of luck. Uh, you yeah. need a wee yeah. bit of something. Uh, but I just uh, maybe wait the appetite for next weekend if there'll be any similar shocks in the Scottish Cup. Uh, yeah, his hips might be a broth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <I'm> <laughs> Can this. you imagine a broth beat Hibs, Tom? <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's, that's, that's a very, 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 very difficult game for Hibs. That win machine, oh, they're just they're getting plugged in. Oh, to go yeah. They are strong. <laughs> you would you would pick them as, as a potential. Oh, oh definitely. You know? the, the, I mean, the, the form they're in, you know. Uh, they're just not losing, you know. And if you go into games, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You have the confidence that we're winning all the time. They'll have to do particularly well to beat us. Yeah, absolutely. The opposite's true too. When you're not winning, you have that gremlin mm. in yeah. your head that you know you can slip. That you know it's a potential banana skin. Yeah, and I hate to put everybody on a downer, but DPG has said, well, "Ask the panelists, what about the lads who ran on and smacked a couple of players?" Mm. I mean, the game is the game is. I think we're teetering at times now. Uh, Ruffy, I think we've maybe had that situation where, you know, when you get trouble at games, it becomes front page news as well. But I don't think we can get complacent about the fact that, you know, we don't want fans to run onto the pitch. Um, we certainly don't want to uh, in any way see players being uh, under threat. The boy who ran onto the pitch at Celtic Park in midweek for the Rangers game, the only thing that was good going through my head was the safety of the Rangers players. Mm. I just, I just automatically thought, if this boy attacks any of the Rangers pay players, it's front page news, you know. And, and and the police didn't catch him, the security didn't catch him. I don't know what happened to him, but we can't be complacent in this country with fans coming on. No, it's your order. I mean, I see. I was watching, watching the game yesterday, and the guy when they scored, when Martin Forrest scored, when Nottingham Forest scored, and. Could carry a knife or anything. Yeah. You know, it's, it's 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 serious stuff now, and you can't always have a Rab Douglas there that when somebody runs on, he just banjos him. Yeah. <laughs> but he's uh, you, you need we need to look at the security. The players have got to be safe on that part. But uh, remember, Big Rab was it was it Airdrie or somebody? Yeah. Come on, and Big Rab just went bang. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a few players actually make sure that nobody. Um, well, to be fair, 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 I've even, I've even been at dinners and I've thought twice about even having a go up and the big man is in me in a headlock. That was enough for me. <laughs> an embarrassing situation at Hibs Hearts game when a Hearts supporter come on and had a run at me. Is that <laughs> and I right? I had to run away from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it's good, it's, good you, it's good that you were fit enough to run away from Ruffy, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. But listen, uh, we we want uh, we want fans to come to the game and enjoy it. Certainly, don't want to see people on the park because at, at the end, the clubs are are the losers in this. There's hefty fines afoot. Um, okay, we've had a look at the predictor. Uh, don't forget subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. We'd love you to be part of the football family. The figures going up and up. We'd really like to thank you for sharing uh, the stream with everybody because more and more people are now realising we are exclusively on YouTube, which is great. If you download the PLZ Soccer app, you will get all the latest breaking news stories. They're there. Uh, you can watch the programme at your leisure. And the good news is coming up very shortly. Uh, we're going to be able to. You're going to be able to watch it live on the phone as well, which is fantastic uh, news as well. If you download the PLZ Soccer app, uh, I'm going to say at this moment, congratulations to Andrew Scott, who is the winner of our competition. He'll be coming with his pal to 
uh, Thursday night. We're going to be there at Social Recluse in King Street in Glasgow. A lot of our merchandise is in there, Ruffy. We're just going to go in, have a few beers, um, tell a few football stories, look at the merch. I am almost certain your man here. Bring some cash with you, will you? Um, I'm almost certain the gear that, that, that yeah. Bob's got in there, he'll want to buy something. Yeah, I'm sure he will. My daughter's already been on his web and uh, she's identified a few things, so yeah. there must be a lot of trendy things in that shop as well. Yeah, I'm sure. discount as well, that'd be good. And the one thing is, in there they've got some great um, music memorabilia as well, uh, Alison. And I reckon your, uh, your little studio that you've built, um, <laughs> that could have some really trendy stuff from your music cave. days. What were you, yeah, it is a woman cave, that's exactly what it is. What music were you into when you were at school? I was into loads, uh, lots yeah. of kind of different stuff. I like to mostly quite a bit of indie stuff. That's exactly indie. why you're going to love it, Ali. Yeah, you're going to love it. She's like little, charlatans and all that, you like all them charlatans? So and like, charlatans weren't my favourite, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Oasis. Stone Roses. Oh, Stone Roses. Roses. Dragon Swimmers. Well, can I tell you something? Bob's shop is absolutely immersed in all that, so it's going to be great. Stone Roses were a band in the 90s, Ruffy. Don't worry about that. Who's your favourite song, I Want to Be Adored? No. <laughs> You're a bad, bad man. <laughs> he's, he's, he's leading you down that road, Ali. Don't get into it. You've already had that this week already, so... Uh, so, listen, um, if you get a chance, if you... Um, are walking by King Street, drop into the shops, great, we've got our uh, merchandise in there too, uh, you can get yourself one of the Maestro training tops or indeed the Legends t-shirts or canvas, uh, the lot, we'd love you to do that, subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel, join us tomorrow, if you can, on the Tuesday, Hugh McDonald will be with us here in the studio alongside myself and Ruffy, thanks to you for watching tonight. <laughs>